Hey everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I've got another mailbag with range. I've got some vintage computers. I've got a vintage game system. I've got some packages. So let's start with the packages. Uh, this feels like there's multiple things in there from Amazon. So let's see. Um, I don't have anything from China in this one because uh, I opened that all up in the last mailbag video, but I'm expecting six more packages from AliExpress. So we'll see. Uh, this is actually related to one of the things I'm going to show you later in the video, um, and this. Okay, cool. So, this is one of those digital antenna thingies, and, um, main reason why I got it was, uh, I'll tell you the story real quick. So, one of the things I'll show you, I guess I might even drop it in now, is that I did get an Atari 2600, not the wood grain one or the Vader one or whatever. Um, I got the 2600 Junior, which is one of the later original models but um as i was hooking it up to the tv uh just the action of putting the wire to the rf thing brought me in a whole bunch of channels that i didn't think i would get i'm relatively far from orlando and i got a lot of channels just from plugging an rca cable uh through an adapter into the uh the um coax connector and so i thought well you know i might as well have an antenna just in case um in case the internet goes down or something like that and then also my parents when they come in town always whine that i don't have regular tv i'm a total cord cutter so i decided to get something like this um, from amazon to get regular broadcast tv channels so if this works well in my office, then I will put another one in my house and so my parents can stop yapping that they can't watch General Hospital um, without, uh, because I don't have live TV. So um, plus with all the madness going on in the world, I don't know when this video will come out, but uh, you know, we're about four days into the Ukraine thing. Uh, so anyway, not a bad time to have some live TV. I did just stick the antenna in the back of the TV and let it uh, start finding channels and it's already finding channels. Uh, we'll see what comes of the whole thing and it might start playing audio as soon as it's done scanning. So we'll see. And this thing is something I already have one of, um, but for my business, I'm doing more and more data recovery, like lots and lots of data recovery. You guys have seen me have, uh, all these different formats. I just picked up an LS120 drive yesterday, which I don't, I'd have to run in my vehicle to get that. Um, LS120 drives, zip drives, MFM hard drives, RLL, all that kind of stuff. And uh, occasionally I have to do data recovery in bulk. And in that situation, I needed a way to do one more IDE drive. Now, there are different versions of these things, and this looks like it's a 3D printed case. I strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that if you're going to buy something like this, buy this style. I have this one, and I'll show you one other one. I have this one. Now, the reason why I say that is because there are some that have just cables, and, uh, you know, there's just like a cable that plugs into SATA. And um, the problem with that is some of the bigger hard drives require more power than the uh, SATA, than the USB port can provide. So something like this has probably a 12 volt adapter, 12 volt, three amps, um, and then obviously a USB three cable. And so the idea with something like this is that um, you can do SATA, you can do old laptop IDE, which was smaller, and you can do standard IDE, ATA, whatever that you want to call it, um, and connect them to a computer. So uh, this is basically the same thing, but uh, cheaper, um, but allows me to do uh, two drives at once, to do data recovery on two drives at once. Now, I don't own, <laughs> it looks like I made it with hot glue in there. Uh, I'm not so sure about this one, we'll see. Um, I think this was like 14 bucks because it was some kind of crazy uh, coupon on it. So we'll see. I'm going to put this through its paces. If I don't like it, it's definitely going back to Amazon. But um, And again, I don't always do data recovery by just plugging into a USB port. But um, it's also one of those pins is blocked. Is that normal? But uh, anyway, so... Um, yeah, so this thing is highly, highly recommended. This will basically allow you to interface over USB any hard drive going back to the early 90s. You know, before then you gotta go through some other things, that I, some MFM and hard cards and stuff like that. But this uh, will give you a lot of range. I can't hit the mute or the, uh, or the down volume while that thing is scanning, so we'll see how all that goes. Um, it's probably gonna start playing audio. 
so here we go. We have, oh, cool. So these are for a project that I'm not ready to talk about right now, but um, they do interface, I believe, with this Olimex board. This is one of my favorite ESP32 boards of all time, and there's another version I've been using a lot that uh, has a PoE, Power Over Ethernet, on it. Uh, but this is ESP32 with Ethernet and um, two relays and CAN bus and uh, power in and battery management and infrared and in and out and all that kind of stuff. But um, they have this connector on here that can be used for um, hooking up things like screens. Well, I want to build my own interfaces that go in these. And I do have crimpers and I do have ribbon, but in the event that I need bulk of these, I'd rather not, these are like six of them for $7, something like that. So it's not even really worth crimping them at that price. But, um, so I wanted to buy a couple of pre-made ones, just make sure we were on the same page about which one was one and all that kind of stuff. And then if I need to, um, I can order them in bulk or I can make custom ones. Let's take a look at this one. Um, We've got 18 channels found so far up there on the TV. Uh, this one, oh, cool. Okay, so this is from Banggood, I think. Yeah, this has got to be from Banggood. It, normally they come wrapped in Banggood packaging, so I know. Um, but this is similar to what you guys have seen before. This is um, an EEPROM programmer, and I specifically asked them for this. Uh, this is the TL866-2+, and this is a revelation for makers. Um, I know a lot of times you guys don't really uh, think about EEPROM programmers as something that makers would use, but there are a lot of different applications for them. And so uh, there's some chip testing applications, there's some hacking applications, some like of that. This is, wow, that's actually really... Um, this feels really good quality, especially compared to the more expensive one that I just bought. So the idea with this thing is that you can uh, pop a chip off an Arduino or your BIOS on your motherboard, and you can uh, pull it into your computer and edit it and kick it back on. And then there's a, they make like 37 different adapters for different types of chips. These are PLCC 44, uh, PLCC 32, uh, this weirdo thing for um, for surface mount chips and all that kind of stuff. So there's just a, a giant uh, array of things that uh, you can program with them. Now, I'm not going to get into the full review, but um, there are some things that when they made this version, they uh, the quick version of the, the issue is they started to allow you to program lower voltage chips at the expense of being able to program higher voltage chips. And so uh, these things can be problematic for some of the really old ones that require uh, 21 through 27 volts and things like that. But um, they can go all the way down to I think 1.8 volts, 1.6 volts, something like that. So uh, for anything you're doing modern or even semi-old, uh, like this 27 series, uh, uh, ROMs, this is a great tool to have. And this thing is like 50, 60 bucks with all the adapters. And so um, highly recommend this thing without even having used it, uh, just because I've seen so many videos about it. But I'm going to take a different route where I'm going to compare it to the one that I have. And then I'm going to show you a mod that you can do on this eventually where um, you'll be able to give this one the limitations, uh, overcome the limitations that it has. So uh, anyway, that's a long way down the road. But for now, uh, this is the TL866-2 Plus EEPROM programmer. I have this sitting on my bench and I hadn't opened it yet, so I figured I'll open it. I'm a big fan of Klein screwdrivers. Now, I will say the ones that they had in the 80s, probably a little bit better, but there's some really cool form factors. Uh, I gave my wife my six-in-one. Um, now, they make these things... They make these things in six in one, eight in one, all that kind of stuff. But I like for everyday office use, I like the six in one. The reason why they call it six in one is because you have a number, uh, I guess that'd be a number one, uh, number one Phillips, number one flat, number two Phillips, number two flat. And then each of these can be a nut driver. So um, you get six things. You probably are only going to use four of them most of the time. These nut drivers I never seem to line up with what I want them to. But uh, the Klein screwdriver is just a good overall quality um, device. And this one is 10 bucks at Home Depot. And I think compared to most of what you buy, um, 
this is actually a pretty good deal. Now I have some of the 11 and ones, 13 and ones and stuff like that. I guess they call it a five and one. That's kind of weird. It's really a six and one. Um, unless these two are both the same size. <coughs> is that the case? They're both the same size? Usually they're different. Si okay. Yeah. So they are different. They're the same size. So you can't, uh, you don't get two different size nut drivers. So it really is a five and one, but at 10 bucks, uh, I think it's a good deal. And I think it's kind of worth having something like this. If you want just something a little bit more quality, it's not going to strip your screws every once in a while. I'll come in here and flatten this out a little bit. I think these are a little bit pointy, but, uh, for the most part, this is my go-to screwdriver and I keep two of them in my electrical box and I gave away the one that was in my office. So I replaced it. Got another Amazon package over here. Let's pop this open. I should know what I ordered from Amazon, but I don't. Uh, this is, still don't know what it is. Uh, so let's open it up. Ah, this is uh, another Arduino shield. Now, I've actually been learning something about these and maybe I'll show you. There's kind of a funny story with these shields and the reason why I buy these quality ones. If you've ever used these or if you've heard about um, people talking about these things not being reliable. Uh, my take on it has always been, if you get a good quality power supply, a lot of times I find the old iPhone power supplies from like the iPhone three and four and stuff like that, or just a really good two amp power supply with a good quality cable, these things work really well. But um, a lot of people have had a lot of fits with them just saying that eh, they connect sometimes and they don't connect other times. Well, there is a reason for that and it is a funny story. And so the story is, and you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but you can see the resistor itself here and you'll see that it says 510. Um, I just know that off the top of my head, my vision isn't quite that good. Um, you'll see that's 510. And the reason uh, that it's problematic is because the original design, um, that's a 51 ohm resistor. The original design of these things, uh, people put a 49 ohm resistor in. This is going back like the last five, six years. Uh, the original one had a 49 ohm resistor, then that became relatively hard to find. So people thought, hey, it would be a good idea to just go ahead and use a 51 ohm resistor. That's perfectly fine. Um, the problem is, is that instead of a 510, which you can kind of see that right there, instead of using a 510, they used a 511, which I think is a 510 ohm resistor, so 51 times 10. And so they basically added 10 times the resistance and plus a little bit uh, than they needed to on the back of this uh, Ethernet port causing all kinds of problems. I mean, you just, you, it's got 10 times more resistance than what it needs. And so um, if you have a real good power supply and real clean power, you can kind of power through that extra resistance. But if not, it's uh, problematic. And so if you, um, you know, if you get these things and you care about quality at all, then you want one that has a uh, 50, 510 or 49 ohms, somewhere 49 to 51 ohms, uh, not 510 ohms. And there are hacks where people will desolder this and put like regular resistors on there and stuff like that. But it's a, you know, it's a tiny operation there. And so this is the Key Studio one, and uh, this is not a sponsored product. But um, if you want it done right, let Key Studio do it, and they did it right. And these things are rock solid. So whenever I need something in either an industrial application or something that is going to, um, you know, work, uh, I use these things. Now this is uh, this one is going to be in a factory somewhere. Uh, there's other ones that are traveling around the trade shows and stuff like that. And again, if it needs to work, use a Key Studio. So this is the uh, Atari 2600 I was talking about. It is, again, one of the more modern versions. I think this thing deserves a teardown and a once over. That's a little crusty, it's not terrible, but it did come with two of these controllers that as best as I can tell um, are crazy rare. Um, just judging by what I've what I've seen and people talking about them almost like they're unicorns. Uh, came with a bunch of games, stuff like that, maybe five, six games and uh, power cord and extra joysticks, stuff like that. So um, I'm gonna be tearing this thing down and cleaning it, maybe recapping it, maybe doing a composite video mod, something like that. So uh, this will appear maybe in a future video or maybe I'll just do it for fun, I don't know. And I know I teased them, but I think I'm going to save the Tandies for a different video. Uh, I got three Tandies, um, uh, 1000, I got a, I'll just tell you, I got a Tandy uh, 1000 HX, an RLX, and one of the MPCC or MMPC, Multimedia PC 486 um, 
Tandies. So like one of the last, so I have one of the first and one of the last uh, Tandies that they made. And so, um, you know, not counting the Cocos and stuff. So anyway, uh, I will save those for a future video. If you're interested in any Tandy stuff, let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching and I hope you have a great day.